Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, hopefully we got some audio. I can't tell. If you uh, if you can hear me okay, please let me know in the chat box. This the way that I'm streaming this. There's just absolutely no way for me to tell whether I have audio because I'm not using OBS and I'm not wearing his head headphones or whatever. Today, well, we'll wait for a few people to come in and see what happens. Oh, we got two in here. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know in the chat box. Because I do not know whether we have audio. And uh, we're going to go over painting equipment. I want to be able to make sure you guys can hear me okay. Just type something in the chat box to let me know that you can hear me. Can you hear me? We only got one viewer now. Please type in the chat box. Can you hear me? It looks like there's audio on that, but... Uh... Okay, we're ready to go. Thank you. All right, what I decided I'd talk about uh, tonight was my painting gear, because it's kind of important. And what I have in my little toolbox here uh, made up it so that you can, you know, produce a halfway decent finish. And uh, let me get a good drink of water here. Come on. Uh, okay, so that you can produce a halfway decent finish. So let me change views here. What I have here is a, a case, and I'm going to go over what's in the case with you. Are the things you're going to need to, uh, to do a, you know, a nice paint job. First thing you're going to need is one of these Randolph color charts. Get them from Wix. Uh, the, the, um, the thinner numbers is, I think, is 9,700, and the clear gallons are 9,600. But you kind of got to ask them when you call them. So I would get one of those. The next thing you're going to need is a good... Camel hair, one inch wide brush for applying clear dope. Take the paint off the stem because the thinners will just eat the crap right off. Just it'll take it right off. So either way you go, would you go with a? Um, my base coats are put on with just a. Let me see here. With just a. This is a Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic. I think they're 35 bucks. I have a few of them. You know, you can keep one for each color. This this is the one that I use for clear. But I have some others at home, one for white, one for black. And, and it's best to separate those. Now, I have two different... Well, first off, you're going to need a regulator. This is another Harbor Freight. Gem, this is a electronic regulator. It tells you how much air pressure you got. By pushing the button, you can regulate it. You got to have air on it to, to get it. But you also want a water trap. I've got one of these on here and one of the blue ones. This is a water trap on this gun here. The two, two different styles. These, when they get old, you just take them off, throw them away, and put a new one on. The only bad thing with these is the threads aren't really great, and these pull off. They're about 4 bucks for that water trap and about 10 bucks for that one. I have two different kinds of airbrushes, and I'll go through the airbrush gear with you so that you know what each one is for. 
as you can see, I didn't clean out the I didn't clean out the uh, jar, bad boy. This is an uh, Iwata Eclipse. And it's a dual action. You push down for air and pull back for paint. This airbrush is the finest airbrush I've ever used. I've owned a lot of them. Pache, DeVelvis, um, some of the Snap-on. I got about 10 of the Snap-on airbrushes. They're no good. This is about 100 and, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just guess. One. 40 or 150 for the Iwata Eclipse. And you get a bunch of accessories with it. But the real crux of the uh, of the painting stuff is this Grex. Now the, the Grex comes with this needle. This needle in it. And I went up and I tried the five millimeter needle which is a bigger needle uh, to try to get some more volume they give you the tip the cone and the the needle on all three incident in, instances instance but that's not what you really want i also i bought the uh i think this is about two ounces it's a two ounce cup that goes on my grex of course, they have another cup as well. The Grex comes with a, uh, the stainless steel cups this size. And then I thought, well, that's not enough paint to do anything. So I'd buy the next size up. And I thought, well, that's the biggest one they got. And this is really slick. It's really nice. This was pretty pricey, this big old this big old cup. But heck, that ain't enough either. <laughs> so what's going on in here? I'm detailing painting equipment. The next cup is this cup. So now you have a regular volume paint cup the same size as the HVLP gun but this puts the the paint on finer it has a fan tip you have to buy that separate too but it, it has a fan tip just like a regular paint gun so you've taken an airbrush and turned it into a top loader HVLP gun. And this is dual action as well, but you pull back for air and then you pull back for material. It it, it doesn't work as good as the uh, Iwata for detail. So if you're gonna do any detail work, you wanna use the Iwata. And if you're gonna do any large spraying, this acts more like a HVLP gun than it does a a true dual action airbrush. So different airbrushes for different purposes. This is a this is made in Japan, high quality. We used to say Japanese stuff was junk, but boy, it's good stuff now. This is German, this Grex. Got to clean that uh, little bottle out. But one's a bottom loader and one's a top loader. You want to have some assorted cleaning brushes because you're going to need to clean up these guns. You, this is a substantial investment here. And then this is the airbrush cleaner. But this airbrush cleaner is basically uh, for... Oh, what do they call it? Latex paint. 
but you want to make sure you lube them with the uh, with the lube so they don't rust up. I also have the uh, central pneumatic. Let me put this stuff back and I'll show you that. I'm real happy with this with this setup. I mean, you you if you got this setup, you're basically set for all around painting. You could finish an airplane with what's just in this box. You, of course, you need tape and sandpaper and so on and so forth. But and let's put this little parts inside here. I'm basically testing out sound equipment. It, do we have uh, echoes at all? Because <clears throat> I got one mic behind me and one mic ahead in front of me. Does it, uh, you know, does it sound all right? I'm, I'm trying to work it out for this Saturday. I'm also bringing lighting and, and a whole lot of stuff over to John's. I'll be spending the night over there Friday to get all this crap set up with a mixing board, headset. I'll show you the, the camera gear. The camera gear that I'm putting in is those lights. I got two of them babies. I got uh, two cameras, another mic boom behind me here. And hopefully... Let me give a test on that microphone that's behind me. See if you can hear it okay. Why <laughs> didn't want to focus after I moved it? Hello. Let me see if I can get it in focus. Focus up, buddy. There we go. All right. All right. I'm checking this mic out now. Uh, shouldn't be any... Should be a little different than the overhead mic, but... Uh, you can't tell. So hopefully I can get all this uh, set up so we got good audio and good video. I need a 12-year-old kid to do this for me, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going to be cleaning the workbench off back there before I before I do any building I you know I kind of got to get I got to get the place like this you know, I got to measure this so I can give you an exact idea I got a hundred foot tape here I don't know it's only got to be 15 by it's 15 15 by 20 foot it's like being in a closet. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know how I got this much stuff in here. Put these in last. I was watching some uh, videos of uh, Matt Colin flying his lumber gazer and uh, Wendy Nats from 2009 today. Brings back a lot of memories. Well, we kind of got it in there now. Let's 
So basically, I'll be able to go back and, and uh, listen to the audio to see if see if I got the audio correct. This this was just a short video. To let you know I'm still alive, still thinking of you guys. I I haven't started building. I haven't built it all today. You know, been on kind of a I don't know three month building spree, and uh, more more three month painting spree. So I thought I'd finish it up with a little rundown on my paint kit. Of course, everybody knows I have a sign plotter back there. Let me... Let me turn that uh, camera. Yep. Can't see that. There we go. That's a MH871 Mark II U.S. cutter sign plotter. I cut all my stencils and such with that. And that works real good. It saves a lot of taping. A lot of taping. Let's see how many we got 11, 11 watchers and four thumbs up. All right. Uh, any questions on the paint gear? The biggest paint gear you can get, and nobody wants to wants to believe it, is yeah, let me dig that up here. The biggest paint gear is right there. <laughs> right there. Sandpaper. Five thousand. That's for finish. Fifteen for finish. That's uh finish paper. Six hundred, you're coming down into six hundred. Five hundred. 180, you got to have some 180. 320, I got rolls of 320. Sticky back. This is 100, I think. No, that's 2000. It says 2000. That's in the wrong sleeve. And 100 grit. Of course, I got rolls of 80 and rolls of 100, too. And roll. <laughs> Roll the 320. Roll the 80 grit. That's your paint job right there. All these, all these things right here that I just showed you is your paint job. You got to use this. You start here and you work your way to that. Uh, And then, then to this, the 180. And then I got some 220 around here somewhere. But you end up using this, lots of this. And this is before you paint. So all these things before you paint. Then you put your clear on your airframe. You start sanding with that. That's too loud. Then you drop the 500. Then 600, then 1500, then 2000, and then 5000, and that's how you get a good paint job. Then you then you can use this <laughs> equipment. So it sounds it sounds like a lot of work because it is. But if you're going to finish airplanes like what's hanging up there on the wall, 
you're going to have to use sandpaper and lots of it. There's just no other way around it. Tips and tricks. If you start with Randolph products, use Randolph products all the way through the build. So start Randolph clear dope base and then color and then clear. Randolph all the way. Do not try to do like Billy does. He gets away with it where he uses Aero Gloss clear on the wood and then he'll switch to SIG. And then he'll use whatever and then spray urethane. I don't know. Billy, Billy's a magician and he can he can do that. And uh Wendy, he, he liked uh Brodak products. I think he probably had a hand in in formulating the Brodak dope. The problem was, and the, the reason why he was always decanting his dope is that the pigment was so low in Brodak dope. Well, Randolph makes Brodak dope. So if you call up Randolph, Wix, Aircraft, or Aircraft Spruce, anybody who sells Randolph, your local airport, and use Randolph dope, you're basically using Brodak dope, only that's got more pigment. So you don't have to decant it. If you decant dope, you're taking off the binder. The binder is the chemical, it's, it's the clear. How paint is made, you can ask Bob Brookins this. You take a quart of clear binder, and then you add the pigment to it, which the pigments are all interchangeable. It's just ground up brick or ground for silver is ground up aluminum or gold or what whatever. The pearlescents, they have a formula, it's, they shoot a profit on a paint and it gives you a formula and it tells you how many grams of each of these pigments goes into that vehicle which is the binder and then you after you after you um, get that mix then you add the clear to that binder so the clear and the binder are basically the same thing so if you decant or you let something sit for a month or whatever, and all the pigment sits to the bottom of the can, and you pour up all the clear and binder and add thinner, all you got is pigment, and it's it like chalk. It's no good that way. So the best thing to do is is uh, use a formulated product that's, you know, the this, this is the color, Miss Ashley Red, Ferrari Red, whatever color it might happen to be. Um, you know, right straight out of the can because that's how they made it to work. They didn't, uh, it's not made to work decanted. And, and if you'll notice Wendy Tapes, he's always, always got a problem with paint pull-ups. That's because, it's, and it's, Gackabone had some, had some, Huge amounts of problems with paint pull-ups. That's because of silver. My advice is don't paint your airplane silver. It's the heaviest paint out there. And it's the worst adhesion. That means paint won't stick to it. <laughs> it's terrible. Unless you really thin out your paint. So does it work? Yeah, if you if you put enough, I saw him put four quarts or four pints, just two quarts of silver on an airplane before he painted the color. Two quarts. That's that's a gallon. <laughs> that's a gallon of sp spray on 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 an air. There's no way. I mean, I no way. I I don't use a gallon of anything. So if I start with a quart of clear and I pour thinner in it, <clears throat> that makes a half a gallon. And I use a half a pint of color. This, that silver he uses. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think he adds talc to it. So, <clears throat> basically, basically on my airplanes, if you take the total number of unthinned dope and put thinner in it, I'm only shooting a half a gallon of paint on my airplane, a half a gallon. And if a guy takes a gallon of silver and shoots it on there before he shoots the colors on there, you know, he's got two gallons of paint by the time he's done. Because my whole regimen is one half of that quart goes to the base coat and one half goes to top coat. Yeah, my John and I were talking about that. It, my, my airplane would benefit extremely, you know, quite a bit. If I put another coat of clear on it, or two, or three, or four, it would look absolutely beautiful. But then it's too heavy. And if, let's talk about that 64 magic number. The 64 magic number used to be the weight didn't matter. It was the engine size. So if you ran a 40, you could run 15,000 wires. Well, today's 40s put out as much as a 60. And how the guys used to get away with getting around that is when the, the VF40 40s came out, they just take the guts out of them, put 46 parts in them. So now you got a 46 and run them on 15,000 wires. It doesn't matter if the airplane was 80 ounces, 15,000 wires. And because it, because it was a 40 case so now they went to the pull test by 10 times or whatever the difference between 18 and 16 thousand wires for anybody out there who has an airplane that's eligible to fly 15 thousand wires i want you to put a set of 15 thousand wires on your airplane and fly it and then right back to back put a set of 18 thousand wires on it and fly it and especially in heavy winds you can see those lines bow as you're going around. The, what does that mean? Lag time in the handle. They're whipping. They're flopping. When you turn like that, they flop. So don't hit that magic number, that 64 number, because then you're sunk. You're, you're, you're set to run 18,000 wires. Of course, we got guys out there saying, well, I always run 18,000 wires because they don't stretch. Well, if your airplane wasn't 80 ounces, they wouldn't stretch. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> you know, and these are top guys. Well, I always run 18,000s because they don't stretch. They feel more positive. Well, if your airplane's a turd, you know, what do you expect? So try to hit, try to stay under that uh, 64 mark. And the only way you can do that is with a lot of this, a lot of the sandpaper. And less paint. The biggest kick I got is I won't say who. But I added eight ounces to the CG so the airplane would fly better. <laughs> okay. I guess. I don't think I'll be doing that. Polyfiber. Let's see. Polyfiber. Poly silver. Spray silver. Has some. That must be using just silver dope. I don't know what you mean by that. Polyfiber. Poly spray. Silver. Has some in but he must be using just silver dope. I don't know what that means. Um, don't use silver. You'll thank yourself in the long run. And here recently, in the last couple of airplanes, I used to prime everything. You know, I use DC 540, but that went away. So we got the Crest primer, which is twice as heavy. I got a gallon of primer, uh, automotive primer that weighs, I got away 15 pounds for the gallon. 
and I was going to try to mix up my own primer with xylene and and uh, MEK and tulene and you know to thin it out and make that same formula as uh, as uh, the DC 540. Well, we got away from primer altogether, and the airplanes got lighter. You know, I I used to have a acquaintance, or what he's mad at me now. And he always said, well, don't use any primer. Just use clear dope. Sand it until it frosts over, and then you're ready to spray. Well, I was of the mindset. I mean, it took me a lot of years to get there, but he was right. Ain't going to be no more primer for me. The, the only time I prime anything is if we got fiberglass nose. And I'm not real sure you got to do that, but the reason why fiber you, you want to spray the uh, primer on a fiberglass nose is because of the weave in the glass. I only put one coat of z epoxy on my on the noses, so it's not real filled. Or you could go ahead and put a second coat of z epoxy and sand it smooth. But I'm not real sure that dope has a good good enough bite to bite into the fiberglass. And the reason why the primers work is because of the chemical uh, reaction. They're using uh, MEK and xylene and tulene and all that stuff that's bad for you to melt into the into the glass or into into the metal. Basically, when you spray a piece of metal, if you use regular primer and then you spray over it in six months, it'll just fall off. The paint will just peel off in a sheet. And you say, well, I primed it. Yeah, but you didn't use self-etching primer. Self-etching primer has acidic properties that eat into the metal. So you get that self-etching primer on first, such as uh, zinc chromate, the, the green, pea green color primer on on aluminum parts on an airplane. That's that's a rust inhibitor and a self-etcher, zinc chromate. Well, the gray car primer is the same. So if you're gonna paint a, sp a spinner, make sure you get self-etching primer and at least spray one coat of that on there. And then you can spray um, a regular primer and sand it smooth and shoot dope on it. So there's a, there's a few things to know about painting. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's pretty simple stuff. As long as you keep, keep with the simple steps of start with one material, stay with one material. Don't put too much on. Don't paint fillets. How many guys have been to the Nats and seen, and I saw Wendy poking holes in fillets and trying to push them down to make them per But if you didn't paint them, they wouldn't be lifting up. And you say, well, what do you mean you don't paint them? You just let the overspray from the spray of the gun land in the fillet, and that's plenty. If you put a wet, I'll guarantee you, if you put a wet coat down a fillet, within a week, it'll be lifted out. And it's real simple to explain. The fillet goes around the corner like this. You lay in a wet coat of paint, and as it dries, it's shrinking, it stretches, and it makes it... <laughs> Instead of laying down in here, it's stretching out like that, and you got a pulled up fillet. So don't paint fillets. I use the um, super fill and leave some tooth on it. You know, you can always <clears throat> you can always finish up in the end. And you, we say, well, what do you mean? Well, that's why they call it finish. Instead of putting all that silver and primer and all that crap underneath the substrate. Just do it like I do it. And when you come to the end, elbow grease, sand it all out. And that way you got a thin finish. Tonight maybe that's what he was using. I'm wrong. Okay. Um, So I, I like to finish up in the end. So if I had my rathers, I would put one coat of dope on the woodwork and put the rest on the top. But I can't get the tissue to stick <laughs> with one coat of dope. 
So that's why you got to have three. And we did go to four. But I think what's on the next finish, I'm going to try, is I'm going to brush on 100% unthinned clear first coat, one coat. And it'll soak right into the wood. Then I'm going to go to spray. I'm going to spray two coats or maybe three coats on the top of that mix 50-50 then put my tissue on. So there's only going to be one coat of brushed, brushed clear on the airplane and the rest will be sprayed. That should level things out more, especially if, if we sand it. Cause I noticed a couple spots on the last airplane I finished that, you know, it, it just seems to happen on a finish where you just go, well, I miss that. Now there's no reason for it it gets like a little pockmark, like a little acne, and you got to sand the crap out of it, but you don't have any clear on it, so you can't level it. So I'm going to try to get away with that by doing things a little different. Hello, David. I hope I've answered any questions on uh, painting equipment and finish that you might have had. If you don't, if you have a question, you can go ahead and ask in the chat box. I, I can see that pretty good. Let's see, let me pop this out, put it over here. Pop chat, pop out chat. And we'll put it on this, this one here so I can see it even better. There we go. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I, a lot of guys seem to struggle with uh, with finish. I, I don't know why. It's, it's not that difficult. There we go. I don't, I don't know why it's not that difficult if you have the right tools and and the right sequence but the biggest tool is right here is a sandpaper I, I can't i can't express that enough i hate it you know but what are you going to do i might i can't have someone else sand it for me because it won't get sanded the way i want it so how long was your arrow gloss around how long was arrow gloss around Aerogloss has been around for years. All the time that I was a kid flying, so 60s to 60 until 1995, because I bought some at Schaefer's Hobby in 95. I bought the. I still have two quarts of Aerogloss dope, Un, unopened Aerogloss dope. So I would say, now this is just 19, mid 60s that I know of, but any of the older guys than me might know that it might have been around in the 50s. I don't know. So it's been around a long time and it's too bad they quit making it, but I think they quit making it because it has MEK in the thinner. They, they didn't like that chemical. And the other day, John and I were using something. Oh, that's what it was. Retarder. I'm not sure. I'm going to try to get an MSDS on that retarder, but I think it's carbon tetrachloride, <laughs> which would be cool if it is, because it sure smells like it. But they outlawed carbon tet and... Uh, and, you know, it might be re retarder as another name back on the market. I don't know. Sure smells smells like it. Yeah, I go, I've smelled that smell before, and I can't place it. What is that smell? And your airplanes, when you use uh, a retarder in it, have a rubbery finish. That's why it, it takes longer for that rubber to dry up. I mean, air, you, the airplane, if you squeak it, you know, uh, 
if you take an airplane that's painted with with aero gloss or with wicks or you know whatever randolph sig certified if you take your finger and it's dry and you push down on it it goes squeak well it won't if it's got a retarder in it it'll it's rubber it's rubbery and it and it loads the sandpaper too so you got to make sure you use a lot of water if you use retarder but the the trick of the the old time trick of the day back in the aerogloss days and i haven't been doing it lately and you know my airplanes last they're Really, airplanes should only need to be built for one season. It shouldn't have to be built for an eternity, or else you end up like me and you got them hanging all over the place in two different states. Um, you use one drop of castor oil per ounce of dope, and what that does is plasticize it. Back in the day, a lacquer uh, paint jobs and aero gloss that if the airplane lasted five years, the finish would crack from being so brittle. Well, if you put a drop of castor oil per ounce of dope, it would plasticize it. And that along with double boiling it, you know, it really flowed nice. That stuff was great. <laughs> that was really nice stuff. Very dangerous to double boil. I'm not recommending that to anybody. If you read uh, Tom Lay's story, in 1974 model aviation, I think it was around June or July issue, he's holding his Continental. I have it around back in St. Louis. or I have it somewhere. Who knows? I got so much crap everywhere. I don't know. Tom Lay wrote a story. And I think I think Chris McMillan even knows about it, where they were double boiling on the stove and it exploded to put paint on the ceiling. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh man. Just brushing, never shot it. Well, you're going to have to get you. I, somebody got mad at me for making this statement. I won't say who. But somebody got mad at me for making this statement. And I'm going to do it just to prove I can do it. Those, those old uh, bug sprayers, they got a can on the bottom. And you pump it. You pump the air in it. And then you push the button and it kind of spurts it out. I know, I know for a fact that I can paint an airplane with a bug sprayer and you won't be able to tell that I did it. But it'll take a lot of sanding. And I'm going to do it, I don't know, I might do it, I, I should do it on an old airplane I got at home so I don't have to worry about, it's not a new airplane, it's just an old airplane, just to prove I can do it. I used to win motorcycle uh paint shows with spray can tanks and you'd never know they were spray can lacquer paint is exactly like dope it's uh it's the same process it's basically 35 millimeter film melted but you spray can it black spray can the tank black or maybe blue lacquer or whatever color like candy apple red first silver then candy and then lay in the flames and tape them all up and then take spray cans and dust in the greens and the blues and the yellows and all that stuff. And then clear coat it with a spray can and then sand it with 2,000. You know, the same shit I do here now, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and then polish them up. And you can't tell the difference. You'd say, well, man, that was a custom paint job done with some high-end equipment. No, no, not at all. Spray can your eyes, especially with the spray can shine, with today's 2K clear, I'll guarantee you, 
on a motorcycle. We didn't have 2K clear back then on a motorcycle tank. If I sprayed it the way that I sprayed with my spray cans and used 2K clear over it, it'd be a you know ten thousand dollar paint job. You just couldn't tell. So if you only got a brush, Amazon sells rechargeable spray cans. That's another alternative. I think they're 40 bucks for the kit. And you pour the paint into it, turn it upside down, and put an air hose on it, charge it full of air, spray it till it runs out, take the top off, pour the paint in there, turn it upside down, put a charge hose, you know, charge it with your air compressor and spray it. If you do that, just make sure you use a water trap on the airline coming from the tank to the can. So you don't get any water in it or else it'll spit out water and then you'll be crying. But that, that's an alternative. If you didn't, if you didn't have a compressor and you didn't have all this high-end gear, $40 uh, rechargeable, let's, let's look for that and see what, what, whether they got that. I'll, I'll look right now. I'll even put up the uh, link. Oh. Gonna close out of this one and open a new tab and go to Amazonio. Amazon's got everything. Recharge R E C H A R G A B S P R A Y. Right there, it came right up. Rechargeable spray can. They're thirty-three dollars. That's rechargeable fire extinguisher. You can refer air power spray can. Here's one for twenty. And let's see here. Refillable oil pressure. No, we want a sure shot. You don't want to use those. That's a degreaser can. But I'll put up I'll put up a link right here of uh You can you can refillable air powered spray can shiny silver fifteen that's twenty bucks. Let me look at that one. Air powered spray can shiny silver. I want to make sure it's the right one. Junkyard you can you can spray bottle. That even comes with tips. Extra tips. There's all kind of stuff there. You can spray first refillable air-powered spray can that looks and feels just like a regular aerosol can. Okay, here's the link. And we'll post it in the chat. Control C. And we go down here. Control V. Enter. I didn't like that. Oh, I'm over the limit. <laughs> I can't send you the link because because it's too long. Let's see here. Just uh, control C. Let's put this in and maybe maybe this will bring it to the can. Let me delete this. Delete. Delete. Control V. And you can try that right there. You can look in there and, uh, you know, it should just go to Amazon and type in rechargeable spray can. But it came up, you had about 40 of them in there. So if you, if you don't have a, you know, access to a uh, compressor or equipment or whatever, $20 alternative, and that's probably better than my little compressor here. Oh, I was going to show that, too. Now, I have a big upright compressor at home. But here in uh, Stun Hanger East, in the closet, I don't, I, I have to go over to John's. Or if I want to do, 
if I want to do some spraying here outside, I got another hose here too. I have this little central pneumatic. Uh, turn this down. Turn it down just a little bit, a smidge. I have this little central pneumatic uh, air compressor, and it that's what I painted the scallops on my airplane with, because I did it here, the scallops, I guess. And, uh, you know, it works. Not ideal, but come on. Put this hose in the box too. I'm not tripping all over all this crap. And you notice it's got a water trap on it as well. Water trap is uh, A number one. You know, I, I paint at my house upstairs in my model room. And John paints in the garage, and he's got drop-down plastic or whatever, so it doesn't go anywhere in the garage. I don't care at home. I just turn on the fan and suck all the fumes out the front window, crack the door and get a draft going. And the heater's running, so you don't want to paint in high humidity, so in the summertime... The, the house is air conditioned, so the humidity's down because it sucked all the humidity out of the air. Or I might even paint on my workbench, you know, sometimes. I don't know. But this has been a, this wasn't real expensive either, this little little uh, air compressor here. I think it was 40 some dollars or something. It was not a whole lot, you know. You got to look at it this way. When you're, build, when you're building airplanes, what else would you be doing with your money? Would you be going out to dinner? Well, you could. Would you be going to the bar? Well, you could. But what does that get you? It all goes down the toilet. <laughs> At least if you spend a couple of bucks getting the good, getting tools. You got stuff to keep you occupied for a while. So that's basically what I do with, you know, my time is spent sanding. Or today I just been relaxing, straightening stuff up. I, I did want to put out a video on on equipment though, because a lot of guys have asked me what I use to get the paint jobs that I get. It ain't what you use; it's how much of this you want to put into it. That those reams of paper and elbow grease. Because everybody thinks my airplane's done. No, it ain't. It, I'll rub on it some more until I get it all perfect. You know, well, nothing's going to be perfect, but it'll get, get as good as it can get for two quarts of dope. You know, what do you expect? <laughs> got to do with what you got. Anyway, guys, I've been on for an hour. I hope I've answered uh, some of the questions. I have a gun. Okay, I guess... I don't think I've missed any. If you have any more, you ask them now. And I will uh, try to answer them. I think I've showed the gold leaf before and the, the leaf. Yeah, I, I have leaf here. I have sizing here. You know, if I want to do that stuff. I want to letter a truck or whatever. And you younger guys, all these skills that I'm showing you, 
can be used anywhere. You don't have to use it on model airplanes. You can use it anywhere. Motorcycles, cars, you know, whatever. You're building a house. You know, you got to be able to read the tape measure. Think in your head. If you, if you, <laughs> if you take away three sixteenths from an inch, what do you got, you know? Uh, or five eighths minus an inch. How many, what do you got? So, I'll quit bugging you. Well, no, you ain't bugging me. Oh, here we go. I got somebody calling. I got to go, guys. I'll be back tomorrow. Hang on just a second, okay? okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Till I see you tomorrow. Fairwinds, tight lines. See ya.